Hello, everyone. My name is Eddie Liger. I run the political education outlet Midwestern Marks. But today is going to be a very different video than what I'm used to making because I'm going to be talking about something that happened to me personally and something that happened to our website as a whole. So the other day I was scrolling through our website's TikTok comments and I saw a comment from an account called Victims of Daneland. And now when I saw this, I reached out to this account immediately. I got very excited to see that this account existed because I had a feeling um, I knew what the purpose of that account was. I knew uh, what they were trying to do with this Victims of Daneland account. So I shot them a message. They responded to me almost instantly, and now here we are. So the point of this Victims of Daneland account is to expose the scams and the coordinated hate campaigns uh, that have been devised by somebody who has 1.5 million followers on the TikTok platform. And this is somebody who purposefully attacks smaller accounts and tells his followers to go mass report them in order to get these accounts banned. This is somebody who's notorious for doxing people, sharing with his 1.5 million followers the employers of people he doesn't like, telling everybody to contact their employers and get them fired. He really tries to use the TikTok platform um, in any way he can to affect people in real life. He uses that that audience uh, to attack people's real life, their jobs, you know, or, or the existence of their social media accounts. Um, whereas his social media account never seems to get reprimanded. It never seems to get more than a slap on the wrist from TikTok, although he has been banned from the Twitter app for doxing people. So I'm just going to tell my experience with Dinesh, um, my perspective of the story. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit biased because uh, it's from my point of view, um, but I'll try to tell it as truthfully as possible. Um, and hopefully this adds to the number of voices who are sharing their story about Dinesh because it's been really, really hard to draw attention to what this guy does and the scams that this guy pulls off because he's got such a large audience and he's willing to tell that audience to go mass report people he doesn't like. Um, so anybody who comes out against Dinesh tends to have their account banned um, or greatly suppressed. But yeah, without further ado, I'll just start talking about our experience with Dinesh. Hopefully this helps. So it all started when I made a TikTok video about Iran. Um, I saw a graphic that was posted by the wonderful independent media outlet Breakthrough News exposing that there had been an untrue, entirely falsified article published in the outlet Newsweek. Now, what this falsified article said was that the Iranian government had executed over 10,000 people. Um, this was at a time when there were protests going on in Iran, uh, protests against the government, which the government was cracking down on. And Newsweek went ahead with this story saying that the government executed over 10,000 people. Now, this story was completely false. It was untrue. Um, there were, I believe, one to three people who were actually executed um, when the real story came out. Um, so Newsweek publishing the story was untrue, and they later published a retraction. Now, all I did was go on, on TikTok and make a video explaining that this story was not true, explaining that Newsweek had messed up, Newsweek had offered a retraction, um, and that this was essentially fake news. Everything I said in that video was entirely factual. I also added my opinion, my perspective, that fake news propaganda from the mainstream media in the U.S. can often be used to lie the American public into supporting regime change efforts, into supporting war, um, which is you know a big part of, um, of what our um, website is trying to expose. So I just gave the facts of this case, and I said that let's not forget the war in Iraq and the lie about weapons of mass destruction that Saddam Hussein had, which was used to lie the American public into supporting this war. You know, we want to avoid anything like that in the future. Um, this was not me saying I support the Iranian government. This was not me saying I don't support protesters. This was me saying that this singular news story was fake um, and that we need to be careful of such fake news stories to make sure that we don't get lied into another disastrous, murderous, very expensive war. But all of the sudden, our comments just start getting flooded, flooded with hate to an unbelievable level, a level that didn't even make sense. Um, and one of the other things that didn't make sense is nobody was making a real argument. Nobody was engaging with what I had actually said in the video. Nobody was responding to the points that I made. Um, pretty much every hate comment was yelling at me for supporting the Iranian government, supporting the killing of protesters, supporting authoritarian regimes, 
um, and not standing with the Iranian people, which didn't make sense because the whole point of my video was that we shouldn't go to war with Iran, right? We should protect the Iranian people. Uh, but none of these commenters seem to want to hear that or talk about that. Um, and very quickly, I realized that the hate was being directed from two main sources. The first source was an account with over 400,000 followers by the name of Seabass. Um, now, I've had a long relationship with Seabass. Uh, we've known each other for two years. He's hated me from the minute he found out who I was. Um, he has doxed me by releasing my actual personal phone number on TikTok. Uh, he's also been allowed to keep his account after doing so, which is incredible. He has sent countless emails to my former employers uh, trying to get me fired. Either way, this guy Seabass was coordinating a hate campaign. And then I noticed another character, another source that was directing hate towards our channel. And that source was Dinesh, Daneland, the person who we're here to talk about today, who I saw had 1.5 million million TikTok followers. And this blew my mind because Dinesh made a video basically showing the faces of two people who had been tragically killed in Iran, yelled at me for not supporting the Iranian protests and supporting the murder of Iranian people by their government, told his 1.5 million followers, that is what I think and that is what I support, although it is not. And then posted my personal Facebook page as well as the website of my employer and told his 1.5 million followers to contact my employer to get me fired um, or to send harassment to my personal Facebook page. And honestly, when I saw that this person attacking us or sending hate our way had 1.5 million followers, I was kind of shocked. I was kind of blown away because what he was saying in the video was so false you know, and what he was trying to do by getting me fired and, and coordinating hate towards me was so nefarious and wrong. I just couldn't believe that any mainstream social media platform would allow him to keep his account, allow him to keep doing this with his platform. Um, but as the saga continued, you know, we saw that there was really nothing that you could do against him because TikTok would never punish the guy. Right. TikTok would never threaten this guy's account. They they never um, sent him account warnings, but they would consistently ban and take down the accounts, the smaller accounts being targeted by Dinesh. So I made a few videos exposing Dinesh, um, explaining my actual views on Iran, explaining how he had misconstrued them and lied. Um, pretty much every response video I made to him would get taken down, at least for a little bit. Um, and then I would appeal those takedowns to TikTok and a lot of them would end up getting put back up. But that obviously slows the momentum of the video, makes it so it gets less views. So he's able to coordinate his followers to suppress any criticism against him, which is how he's been able to do this and pull off this mass scam for so long. Now, after I made those videos, I immediately started digging into Dinesh's history. I immediately started looking up anything I could find about him. One of the first things I found was that he was completely banned on Twitter. Uh, he had been banned for doxing people, sharing people's phone numbers, sharing people's employers. Uh, so that was a light bulb in my head like, ah, this is a systematic, systematic methodological way that this guy goes about this, right? This is something that he does and that he's got practice doing and that he's been doing for a long time. We just happen to be the most recent people who have been targeted by it. Right. And ultimately, I think he thought he could probably make some money off of off of us and creating this drama. And I was finding crazy stuff as I was researching this guy, full YouTube channels dedicated to exposing his scams, uh, giant Twitter threads explaining uh, the way that he's doxed people, um, exposing him for these tactics that he's used time and time again. And I started working this information into my videos, exposing and responding to Dinesh. I explained that he's a known scammer. I explained the people that he screwed over in the past. Um, and those videos, again, would all do numbers for a little bit, and then they would get taken down. And then that would either slow their growth um, or the videos would remain down completely. TikTok wouldn't even put a lot of them back up, almost like they were protecting the guy. And one of the craziest things is they wouldn't remove his doxing vid. The video of him doxing me um, and showing my employer and showing my personal Facebook is still up to this day. Now, I know that our videos were getting suppressed, but I have a lot of good friends on TikTok, a lot of people who have my back. I've been on the app for a while, met a lot of great people on that silly dancing app. 
And these people were coming out of the woodworks, making videos, destroying Dinesh, exposing him for things he had done in the past, exposing him for the things that he did to me. And also, I spent a lot of time and effort on one video that wouldn't get taken down, that wouldn't get banned, that would explain the entire situation about Dinesh very calmly, very rationally, without any personal attacks or hatred directed at him. You know, making sure that my video was within TikTok's community guidelines and there was nothing where they could even, you know, claim that I was crossing the line. Now, this video ratioed Dinesh's video doxing me. That video got something like uh, 16,000 likes um, and our video got over 20,000 likes. And now people were going over to Dinesh's account and leaving negative comments saying, how could you do this? This is a scam. Who do you think you're helping by this? Uh, you've done this time and time again. You know, what's wrong with you? And Dinesh is just, he must have been on TikTok all day that day, all day, because he was just monitoring his own comments, delete, 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 block, 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 ban, 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 ban. Um, but he was getting flooded with comments for at least 24 hours, as well as videos um, exposing him and adding him. And I remember my friend Michaela made a video at this time that kind of explained well or showed well the frustration um, in trying to take on somebody like Dinesh, in that she and other creators with smaller accounts were truthfully exposing and explaining the things that Dinesh had done. But because he had such a large following, um, who were used to, you know, being coordinated in mass reporting campaigns, he would get all of these accounts banned, right? He was getting all their videos taken down. Um, and a lot of these creators were having their accounts fully taken away because they would be mass reported by Dinesh's audience. Um, and one of the, and this TikTok creator, Michaela, that I was talking about made a video saying that, like, we're trying to expose this guy. We're explaining, you know, A, B, and C that he's done wrong, that he's done you know, that's actually illegal. Um, and TikTok is continually banning us for doing this um, while leaving his account up and not even giving him as much as a slap on the wrist. And somewhere along the line in this saga, I don't remember exactly when, but Dinesh released a mug. He released a mug that said Eddie's Tears, my name, Tears, and then it was like a crying face or something. Now, I don't remember exactly when this was, but it was like the day after he doxed us, right? And he made this big, long sob story in his video doxing me where he's like, I just care about the Iranian people and I can't stand these vile, horrible people, you know, who would support the Iranian government and hate the Iranian people and want them killed. You know, let's get some retaliation against this guy. So the day after that sob story video, he's selling a mug. Right, he's selling a mug about the situation like Eddie's tears. And it just made it very clear to everybody involved that he didn't care about the Iranian people, that my video was actually aimed at protecting the Iranian people and educating people about what's going on with the situation in Iran. Um, whereas his video was just about doxing me, attacking me, creating some drama so that he could sell his mug and grow his follow. But I will say because of the number of friends that I have on TikTok who are willing to start fighting for us at the drop of a hat, and because of that one video, that ratio Dinesh that we made, his reputation did take a hit. His reputation took a hit from this whole interaction. Um, he was exposed to a lot of people as a scam artist and as somebody who, you know, wasn't a leftist, wasn't somebody who cares about oppressed groups and liberation movements. Um, he was just someone using, you know, a, a political event or a movement in Iran to try and make himself money, right, to try and basically pull off a scam um, and, and sell a lot of mugs uh, by attacking and creating drama with Midwestern Marks, who, you know, we have quite a few enemies on TikTok who Dinesh could mobilize against us. People like Seabass, who is now buddies with Dinesh. And then for those who don't know, recently our TikTok account was banned and our buddies, Victims of Daneland, who I made this video for, explained that it was Dinesh. It was Dinesh coordinating campaigns against us, um, coordinating campaigns, getting people to mass report our account and get us banned, um, which makes sense. You know, I don't think he ever let that situation go. Right. I think usually he's able to scam people. He's able to suppress and get banned um, the people who he wants to suppress and get banned and boost his own content and make money and, and do his thing. 
um, keep pulling off these scams. But, you know, because of the way he decided to attack us and because of, you know, the resources that we're lucky enough to have um, and because we didn't let him set the narrative, you know, we came out against him and, and retaliated against the lies that were being told. Um, it exposed him and it hurt his reputation. And there were a lot of, you know, people in my comments telling me, you know, I used to be a fan of Dinesh. I thought he was just a leftist who attacked bad people. Um, but this situation has shown me he's just an opportunist and a scam artist. So again, I don't think he ever forgave me for that. And I think him and Seabass, or I know him and Seabass have been coordinating to try and get our account taken down ever since. Um, they do not like us. Um, and now they've been successful in getting uh, one of our TikTok accounts banned. Um, but we've created another one already. Um, and it's it's growing fast. And I've already got Dinesh and Seabass blocked. So we're hoping for the best. Either way, this guy needs to be exposed. Uh, people need to know that he's a scam artist. And as somebody on the political left, um, myself, somebody who considers themselves a socialist, I think this is super harmful because Dinesh portrays himself as a social justice warrior. Um, he portrays himself as fighting for the oppressed, fighting for the downtrodden. But what he's really doing is using these movements, weaponizing these movements to his own advantage, for his own financial advantage. Right? He was trying to use a hot button issue that a lot of people were paying attention to in Iran to stir up drama so he could sell mugs. Right? This is what this guy does. This is his grift. Um, this is how he makes his money. Uh, like a few days after this whole thing went down, he had a live stream. Um, and it was just like a doll, like a Pikachu doll, like a stuffed doll. And it was hooked up to a fake IV. And there was a sign on him that said, send me money or Pikachu will die. <laughs> like, you think this is a serious political commentator? This guy is a scam artist. He does not care about people. Honestly, I've dealt with narcissists in real life, people who are like holy and ultimately selfish. And Dinesh is a narcissist, stereotypical narcissist by the, the, you know, psychological definition. So thank you to victims of Daneland for doing this, you know, exposing this account for what they're doing. Um, yeah, this is wrong. TikTok has allowed this to go on for too long. Um, honestly, shout out to Twitter for banning this guy after he docks people. Like I'm all in favor of freedom of speech. You know, I don't like censorship. But you cannot share people's addresses and phone numbers and employers and send 1.5 million people um, to attack them based on pure lies, based on pure, utter, made up lies so that you can make money. Um, it's disgusting. It's wrong. Um, it needs to come to an end. Uh, so I'm glad some more people are speaking up about it. And I, I hope this video helps. If you want to hear more from me, um, if you're interested in learning more about politics and the struggle of the working class, uh, follow us at MidwesternMarks.com. Thanks again to victims of Daneland. Solidarity.